we going, everyone? Just come to the orchard. I haven't been in here for about a month. It's ridiculous. It's embarrassing, actually. But as you know, I'm very busy. I like to be busy. I like to say I am. Anyway, we're talking fruit trees again. And a couple of other things we're going to touch base on. One was our $5 lettuce head. I know a lot of comments we received from there. A lot of support on that topic there. People, you know, we're just frustrated all over the Australia, if anything, the world, as far as the way our produce is going. It's going straight up through the roof. The quality is going straight down. And it's all due, with all due respect to our growers, it's not about them. I know they're against the wall. They've got a lot of pressure on. And for those who think that I was having a go at our growers putting the price up, absolutely wrong, folks. What I'm saying is that if you're going to be paying that sort of money, you may as well go straight to the grower and cut out the middleman. Give the money direct to the farmer or the farm gates or the family that's involved in the growing, not through the person who picks it up and puts it on a truck and takes it off. Yes, I respect their job too. It's not that I disrespect the positions there, but there is a, a link in that chain that is absolutely wrong and shouldn't be there and it's actually controlling a lot of problems. One bad apple in the bunch, they all rot out. You know that. Speaking about bad apples, well, I haven't got a bad one here. I've got this little green one here. <coughs> what is that? It's not ready. That's all I know. This is not going to be ready till June. What a pity. Oh, bugger. Anyway, don't ever do that. It's like eating an olive off the tree, folks. It's actually worse. We've got some more here. The theory is half twist and if it falls off, oh, it fell off. This has got to be ready. Let me taste it. The label's blown away. So this is a Vasily UC 131429. <laughs> I just made that up. Oh, that was nice. Let me get that piece back. That's better. <laughs> what I'm holding in my hand, let's get serious here. I'm sure many of you have seen this problem. I was down at the garden center in Coba cleaning up the front garden there because we're going back there. Well, we are back there, folks. For those who don't know, we've opened up the garden center again. And this is one of the ballerina apples. Now, they stand about four meters, three, four meters tall. They've got lots of shoots in there. It's a nice, warm, north-facing environment. And it doesn't have to be north-facing. It can happen anywhere. Woolly aphid and woolly scale will affect your plants. To treat this, you can spray it if you like with eco oil and eco neem or make it yourself from the kitchen pantry any any spices you have with a little bit of oil and water you can spray it directly on or if that doesn't work then get yourself metho and a brush in this sort of circumstance when it's really really intense like that and generally that's how you'll find it but maybe not along the whole branch they sort of con uh, congregate in smaller sections or more smaller parts of the branch like there or further up at the top but the fact that it's all over you can drench this with a spray and smother it. What it'll do is suffocate the insect. But that woolly fur that they have on top, or that wool on top, can't um, stop the spray itself getting in contact directly with the body of the insect. So the alternative to that is using metho. Uh, straight metho in an art brush or paintbrush and just go straight over the top of that. It evaporates really quickly. You can break it down with water, but I reckon even just a neat one or even a dampen a rag and just rub it across that. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to avoid this spreading everywhere because I've just brought in a pest into my orchard to risk my health or my, the, the health of my orchard. Get that right, Vasily, so that you can see what goes on. And this will happen in your garden. Now, it may not hurt the tree in the first instance. Repetitive exposure to this sort of problem can cause a lot of problems. It's a sap sucking insect, both woolly aphid and woolly scale, and they do dehydrate the plant and the fur is blowing everywhere. Okay, if it does enter my garden, I'll fix it up, don't worry. Now, on the topic of apples, I touched base yesterday, when well, it's not just apples, it's fruit, fresh produce. Now, you know, you're all starting to realize that this is very close to my heart because it's all about growing. And my mission in life, and part of one of my missions, other than having a wonderful family and growing up my kids, as we all want to do, is to be able to help the wider community and express you know my the love of gardening and nature itself and help you guys get back into the garden of whatever level or capacity you can it doesn't have to be enormous like you know like i'm doing here 20 acres of it you can be just a courtyard or balcony garden but in the meantime we do still shop at the supermarkets right so the topic here today is what is that label that you see stuck on your fruit on the side of your apples your pears 
what else is there? It could be any other type of produce, I'm not sure what else they do it to, but predominantly those harder fruit that can withstand oranges and things like that as well, that can withstand the travel, you know, the, the transportation. We're trying to reduce the carbon footprint, but I remember in the past, oh, Apples were actually getting shipped out to Sri Lanka because it was cheaper to get them waxed over there and then shipped back to Australia to be sold. If you think I'm kidding, do a bit of research. You'll find out. You'll find out. We ship our products out because the labour there is a lot cheaper. And then these dogs are going to bowl me over. And then it gets shipped back down again. So, folks, that's not a reduction of carbon footprint. That's a reduction of costs. That's all it is. Now, that little sticker... Does anybody know what it is? Those little digits, what do they really represent? Is that a barcode? Is it a batch code? Is it a, um, you know, a seasonal thing? Anybody? Text messages coming through now? Fantastic. Well, let's see if it matches what I've found. If it's got a nine at the front, if it starts with a nine and five digits or more, if I've got that correctly, it is organic. If it starts with an eight and it's got five digits or more, it is genetically modified GMO varieties. Now, if it's only got four digits, any random four digits, it is full of pesticides, guaranteed to have plenty of those. So you've got, now I look, I would, I'd love to debate the one with the organic sticker on it, the one that starts with a number nine, but if it's got that number nine, it's meant to be organic. If it's got a number eight at the beginning, it is genetically modified, GMO or GE. And if it has any four digits in any order, it could start with the number four, it has pesticides in it. So guaranteed, and 90% of the time, and growers, if you're watching me, I'm not having a go at you, but I'll tell you some stories if you want to hear some about growers, and it's not, and I'm painting everybody with the same brush here. But for those who know me, I've been around 25, 30 years, traveling, seeing gardens all over the place. And I went to one place in particular, I'm never going to name any company, and I respect their position and everything and all that, but from my experiences, I was harvesting. Now, I'm on a little step ladder picking apple season. I've got the apple bag or bum bag, whatever you want to call it, and I'm picking apples off the tree. Now, we've done a tour around the garden already. This is an orchard. Uh, we're talking, you know, four or 5,000 acres of apple trees. And as I'm picking it, now, we've established initially that they've got the wires across there, they've got the pheromone strips hanging there, the deter codling moth. We've done all the organic measures, certified and everything. Well, anyway, it comes to the stage for me to pick an apple. And as I reach out, and the camera's are rolling just like here now, right? The camera's at this position. I remember it distinctly. I've grabbed the apple, I'm up high, and I've gone, look at this apple. And it starts polishing like that. How delicious. This is how you want to eat your apple, straight off the tree. Isn't that right? He goes, don't. And I'm going, what don't? Stop. He's calling out, the owner's calling out from the background. I'm going, what are you calling out for? He goes, don't eat the apple. Why shouldn't I eat the apple? He goes, we just sprayed him. Turn the cameras off. <laughs> Without a word of a lie here, folks, I said, well, you did what? We've just finished filming a, a segment to start with, telling me that you haven't sprayed, you don't spray, you've got pheromone strips to get your security tick of approval. And I respect that. But then to turn around and tell me that you do spray them because you really can't control them. They really don't work. They do work, but not all the time. We can't afford to lose 10% or 15% of our crop. Well, <laughs> sorry. If a hailstorm comes along, you lose all your crop. So you risk your crop. That's what it is. Work with nature by nature and keep it real. You're going to beep all that out. I know that. But anyway, and this is what happened. He, and, and to finish it off, <laughs> he goes, wait here. I'll go and get you an apple from our trees. And I go, what do you mean your trees? We've got our trees in our little courtyard. We don't spray those. They're the ones we eat. I go, so you wouldn't eat this apple? He goes, nah, man, I wouldn't eat that. You're kidding me. This is what goes on. And I'm not saying this goes on everywhere. I please do not think that I'm having a go at all the growers. This is an example of one grower and I respect them for what they're trying to do because they're pushed into a corner. They're forced to be able to bring the price down and produce the quality without the high overheads. You know, the bottom line is what we're looking at here. Now we have to compromise the quality of our produce by doing little things like that. Now on a a whole nation, you can't filter through every single individual to see what they're actually doing, whether a corporation, whether a, a, a little grower or farmer's market. You can't control that. You've got to go on, on, on good faith and, and on honesty here. And you can go and do your tests and trials and get them to come through. Check it. Yeah, it's good. Or they'll give you a call, say, we're heading over to your place tomorrow. Make sure all those chemicals are disappear. We can't see them. 
This stuff happens. This honestly does happen. If you think it does and you're kidding yourself, wake up. All right, that's the reality. That's how it is for me. And that's one example. I can give you more examples. And look, as we go through the season, because you can see my tone has changed. I'm starting to call it as it is, folks. It's because you're attacking my garden. You're attacking my, my livelihood. This is our, if we cannot grow and eat something healthy or rely on the, the local stores, we're talking the chain stores to produce something that's real, not just a piece of paper that says it's organic, real, physical, organic product that hasn't been tampered by humans. And, and you know, converted into something it hasn't been crossed with pig skins and other fruit and vegetables in the world that create something that's a bit more re resilient to our climate, to our soils. Plants are more resilient than we re really give them credit for. They're very adaptive. And if they don't grow here, then we shouldn't be growing them here if they don't grow that easily. Honestly, this is, we've gone too far. This is part of our greed taking over our mind and our impulse eyes thinking, oh, that looks good. That's why I want it. Look at the inside. Stop judging it from the outside. Research. Look at those little labels. See what those numbers are. Find out for yourself what they represent. You think you're kidding yourself. One more example. A lady came up to me, um, a follower, a viewer, I don't remember exactly where, but I remember the story distinctly. She has allergies. She's born with this allergy. Now, the allergy she has is she is allergic to insecticides, products, plants, fruit, vegetables, whatever you like that you can eat. If it's been treated with any form of insecticide or chemical, uh, she has a reaction to it. That's her allergy. And what's the reaction? She blisters up in the face, all over the lips. She goes and buys from a local produce, organic store. And with all due respect to the, the, the owners, when they buy the produce, they go on the goodwill. As I said earlier, if you say to me it's organic, I'm gonna believe you. Now, I mean, organic means there's no human intervention with chemicals, no treatments and things like that. So she goes and buys from a local produce only to find out that whatever's listed there is organic, it isn't. So she's a walking test testing machine or testing human so she can walk around and you can say whatever you like to this poor lady and I haven't got her contacts anymore but I remember I was actually I was in Port Melbourne when I met her it started to come back to me we were in an organic store we were doing a little bit of collaboration with this store and she was buying from there and they had organic but she was telling me about the organic store that she used to buy from local apples she would take a bite of the apple it says organic and within minutes she blows up now explain to me why. Why does, does this happen? If we're gonna own a store, and look, it's happened to us, I can't say that I have been 100% all the time. I call out my faults. I've used chemicals in the past. I don't use them now. I have in the past, and I hope everybody starts to wake up and reduces the amount of toxins that we are exposing ourselves to. My garden's running on, on nature. That's all it runs on, on nature and a little bit of manure that I put in, which is nature. Again, so if I'm gonna put something into it, it's gonna be from nature. Whatever comes out, we put it back in. Now. The grower, oh sorry, the store that had these apples, I'm going to end it now, folks. Two brothers, and if you're two brothers out there who own an organic store and a fruit store, it's not you guys, all right? Because I haven't met you, I don't know you guys. All I know is that there were two brothers who one owns an organic and the other one owns a retail veggie store. And the why, why they did this, and it's very clever, these two guys, they would go and buy a crate of apples and they'd go through the apples to see blemishes, organic. One that's perfect, non-organic. Organic, non-organic. Simply by looking at it, it's got a blemish, it's been hit by something, it's organic. Because we, we always refer to and relate to produce that's not quite right looking, because some of the marketing strategies from the R&D teams who in the big chain stores say, no, you've got to get produce that looks a little bit deformed, because we are organic people too. We love natural stuff. This is all marketing strategies, folks. That's all it is. So organic, non-organic, purely by visual. That proves nothing. Look at your apples, because they're out of season. When they do come in season, I drop my apple here. Move your bum, mate. See this little well in here? In there? All right, that's a little bit of skin burn there. Well, it's discoloration, but when you see little halos on the apples you go to your supermarket, do you know what they are? Well, that's a well. What, what that means is that when they drench these trees, they don't use a little easy hand sprayer when they spray them, folks. They use these big boom sprayers on tractors with motors on them. They can spray 20, 30 metres, up 40 metres either side. They drench the trees. And we say to the point of runoff, all that water runs down and sits on the apple and sits in there. No one goes around to dry it up and get rid of it. No, it sits in there and it slowly soaks in. 
and it soaks into the inside. So when you take the apple home and you go sit there run, running it under the sink, that's good. You're washing all the silt or dust on it, but you're not getting rid of any chemicals in it because it's inside. So when you grow something yourself, you know what you're doing with it. You know 100% what's in it. You know what you've done to it. And if you use the chemical, that's your problem. You've got to live with that. You've got to eat that. That's fine, but it's probably a lot less than what the, the growers are doing under duress. Okay, they don't do it because they just want to do it. They do it because they need to meet a st standard requirement or a certain requirement. But when you grow it yourself, you know what you're doing in your garden. Keep doing that. Keep looking after it. Keep it natural. Keep it real and share it with the family. Because the old saying goes, you can't eat something from the garden that, or eat something from the supermarket that's going to taste as good as the garden. And if you blindfold yourself and set up a ray of food there on the table, I guarantee every single time you eat something that's straight from your garden, you'll be able to taste it straight away. Compare it without looking at it, without looking at it or touching it. And if you need some seeds, I've still got the prices down. I've told them to keep them down as long as possible. We're just keeping our prices down, folks, because we don't know how long we're going to be able to do this before they take our rights away from selling anything to you. So enjoy what you can while you can. Swap and share seeds, produce with your family, friends and neighbours and keep it real, keep it natural and keep it friendly. Vasulisgarden.com for all the gardening products you need at discounted prices, heavily discounted prices, all at the one place. At Coburg Store and Lethbridge, so you can click and collect and pick up from Coburg, I nearly forgot. And if you are in the other states, folks, it is cheaper to get a flight down to collect and take it back with you than using postage. We don't control the price these prices. So Vasulisgarden.com, you can click and collect two locations, otherwise shop online and enjoy yourselves. From me, Vasili, my